saw Jesus from a distance. He ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask on today that you be magnified for this word of God. Prepare our hearts to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, God. Be magnified in this place, God. We want to go higher in you, God. 
We want to experience you like never before, God. And we thank you for the new thing you're doing in us. Your God, in some Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, touch a neighbor and say, welcome to the mind of a maniac. Welcome to the mind of a maniac. <laughs> and they, 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 they hit some other people. They're like, yeah, yeah, you know that. And welcome to the mind of a maniac. Um, if you Google the phrase, welcome to the mind of a maniac, the very first page will be filled with references to a street poet named Torrance Hatch from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In his lyrics, he talks about how his environment has influenced the way he lives and how he had to keep a tone on him to protect himself because of the ignorance of his community. He also talks about how death and murder is negatively impacting and hypnotizing the youth. He also talks about how commitment in relationships has failed and how everyone is out trying to catch a come up. He also speaks about how people will push you to act in a manner that will end up pushing you into a life lived in chains. Funny thing I was asked by one of my peers is why do you tend to use hip hop as a point of reference for your sermons? And simply put, my response was that Jesus used parables to speak to the culture of his times. And Paul made an amazing declaration in the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians that he says, though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, although I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I've become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessing. Um, I want to take a little play out of Dr. R. A. Burton's playbook and let me modernize and burnerize what that scripture means and that I will do anything to get the job done. Um, I'm not concerned about the naysayers and haters. I'm not concerned with the religious and traditional extremists that's more concerned with what their religion looks like and their traditions look like at the detriment of destroying the kingdom. In the words of the psalmist Trey Psalms, I'm here for two reasons. Y'all know it. I'm here for two reasons. That's to see God's kingdom manifested in the earth and destroy the works of the enemy. Touch a neighbor and say, welcome to the mind of a maniac. <laughs> Uh, I gotta get, I gotta hit the youth one more time. Come here, Boosie. They, they think that they, they, they say that I'm crazy. Y'all know what they say that I'm crazy. Y'all know. Okay, I'm speaking to the youth. Um, so today, before I pitch ten and offer my expository revelation about this marking text and synoptic gospel, I want to take a moment and encourage you today to take off your rose-colored religious glasses and take a true synopsis of yourself and your life. Um, see, many of us are in church with a testimony on the inside of us and not sharing it. In Revelation 12 and 11, the Bible says that they, the believers, triumph over him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. That's right. Uh, y'all, it is like y'all got to respond to me. I, I, I want those preachers right. to talk back to me. Oh, I'm not going to give you heard it, so I'm going to read it again. So let me read it again. It says, in Revelation 12 and 11, the Bible says that they, the believers, triumph over him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. Y'all got that? It was Henry B. Eric that said, if you reflect often on how his atonement has changed you, and if you give thanks often, you will find that your witness of him gains power to touch the hearts of others. When those you invite out of your own testimony feel that witness, they will come to accept him as their Lord and Savior. So plainly put, it's important for you to know that you have to be 100 with yourself before you can be 100 with someone else. Can I get an amen on that? But let, let me help my mothers out a little bit. Um, you have to be honest with yourself before you can be honest with someone else. <laughs> Our positive feelings come from being honest about yourself and accepting your personality and physical characteristics, warts and all. And from belonging to a family that accepts you without, without question, that's the church. I believe that my generation is one of the first generations that cares more about you being 100 than anything else. Um, we are one of the first generations that hold focus on covering lies and exposing truth. We are also one of the first generations that get behind people that are keeping 100 flaws and all. If you want to impact this generation and generations to come, it's important to know that all you have to do is keep it 1,000. It's time out for the church to stop being cute saying that I almost lost my mind when the truth is that you absolutely lost your mind. See, see, it sounds good that I almost lost my mind with God, but the truth is that you absolutely lost your mind. Um, you went stone cold crazy and you went cuckoo for cuckoo. 
cocoa puffs. Yeah, 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 there's some women in here that got to the point where he left you and, and you, you end up being in a place where you start sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry and then you got a little bit more twisted that you start sleeping with Mary too. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, uh, touch your neighbor and say welcome to the mind of a man. <laughs> so today we find ourselves in the Gospel of Mark. By me committing myself to being a student of scripture, I've learned how important it is to be hermeneutically sound when approaching a text. I need to know the setting, the culture, and the attitude of the writer. Uh, when I read what's going on in the text, I want to know where they at. Was it raining, who his granddad it was, what, where his mama was at? I just have to know before I can take a first century text and make it applicable to our 21st, 22nd uh, century context. So we have this brother that's demon possessed. Being demon possessed is basically a condition where you or a situation has caused you to surrender your will to the will of a demonic spirit. So of course my first question is what happened to this brother to cause such a fall in his life to him, I mean to have him in a place where he is now. Yeah. I want to know what he touched as a child. Yeah. Was his daddy not there and he's struggling to understand why? Did his mama turn her back on him and, and go and be with Pookie? Yeah. Uh, well, was he just trying to step up and be what he thought a man was to provide for his family and bust a move that cost him his life? Was he just out there looking for purpose and fell into the occult? Was he tired of being the butt of the jokes and fell into deep depression? Did the man that said that he would never leave her forever, I mean that he would love her forever and never leave her like her daddy did introduce to her to something that shook her life? Was her husband killed by some drunk driver leaving her to fend for her family by herself and all she had was a needle to ease the pain? I once had someone that was in, uh, that, 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 had, that was addicted to cocaine. He said, he said, you really can't talk about it, tell me not to do it unless you know the way it made me feel. So I need to know what happened to that brother before I can be able to judge him and be able to understand the scripture in context and what's going on in the context of the mind of this individual. Um, for me reading this, all I see is a man that has lost control of life. Yeah. Lord, yeah. Many yeah. of you was there. You were tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. You're tired of seeing your daughter look at you in hunger, wondering, when if I, when, Daddy, when would our change ever come? You got so fed up that you figured that you had to bust a move and ended up costing you more than you received. I also need you to see within this narrative, we find him living in the tombs of Gadara. Yeah. These tombs were hiding places for criminals and dwelling places for the poor and insane. Yeah. This man was a product of his environment. Right. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's important to note and understand that your physical environment affects your mental well-being. Yeah. So this brother is among criminals and even amongst criminals, he is, one, he is the one that everybody calls crazy. Yeah. Now that's bad when everyone around you is jacked up, but you the one that they say, yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, he works now. Everybody around you crazy, but yeah, see that one right there? Don't, don't, don't mess with brother, man. He, he throw off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy. yeah, and also in the previous chapter, we see Jesus telling his disciples that they need to go over to the other side. Yeah. I need you to read that when you get home. You, it, it'll make more sense then. He yeah. said, he told his disciples, we need to go over to the other side. Um, I need you to see this, especially if you're a preacher. Jesus had what the man needed, but he was in the wrong location. He had what the man needed, but he was in the wrong location. So he said, I got to get there. Um, I'm willing to offer a Holy Ghost inspired hypothesis that the enemy knew what the man needed and knew that, had, that if Jesus made it where he was going, that he would be able to release that man from what he was dealing with. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so the Bible says in the fourth chapter that while Jesus was on his way, Jesus' boat ran into some turbulence. It's important to know that when you are a carrier of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the gift that's in you will be under attack, not because of you, but because of the mass amounts of people that needs to receive that gift that's on the inside of you. Yeah, you are, one, you are one individual, but you have been spiritually retrofitted so that you can expose someone else to the kingdom, not knowing that your exposure will have such a major impact in that when you release that what's in you, then there will be such a mighty snowball effect that will build up in you so much thing that your gift will shape that community. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do y'all believe that y'all have something in you that can shape your whole community? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, it'll grab, it'll, it'll get, basically have a snowball effect that will build up so much thing that the gift will shake your community. It will shake your city. It will shake your county. It will shake your state. It will shake your region. It will shake your country. It will shake that hemisphere, finally shaking the earth. 
You gotta understand that there's one revelation that can change the whole globe. Think of iPhone. Yeah. Think of I, Apple products. One revelation, yeah. one gift can shake the whole earth. And my question is to you guys on today, do, do I have any planet shakers in here? Anybody that believes that they have something on the inside of them that God placed in him, a purpose that they played, the reason why God placed you in this earth was to shake your whole community and shake your whole community to the point where you start shaking the earth? Uh, I, I got some people that don't even believe that you have anything great and magnificent in you, but I stand here right now and speak to every last one of you that you have greatness on the inside of you. Yes, it's just time for to yes, come forth right now that you got to seek God to find out what God you placed in me. God, what have you placed in me? What have you called me to? He said, every, God gave everyone a measure of faith. Everyone. Y'all hear that? So Jesus is on his way to the other side, and the Bible says immediately his gift is in demand. If your gift is in demand on today, would you be able to release it? That thing that God placed in you think if your gift was put on demand right now, the reason why God placed it was in your face right now, would you be ready? Would you be prepared? That's something to think about. That's right, Reverend Dane. The thing that I love about this passage of scripture is that the Bible says that this man ran to Jesus and worshipped him. He worshipped him. That's what he did. The thing you got to understand is that he ran to Jesus and he worshipped Jesus before being delivered. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Check the text. Verse 6, he worshipped him. And, verse seven, and in verse 7, what did he say? Out. He cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus? You see that? Of the most high God. See, he wants to preach right now. <laughs> but you gotta read it. It, it says in verse 6, he worshiped him. And verse, and verse 7, that's when Jesus decided to cast a demon out of him. Just think about it. This man has been bound by demonic oppression for a long time. He's been ostracized by his community. That's right. When he came in contact with people, all they wanted to do was put him in chains. That's right. I've learned that it's most individuals' plight with the church is that when they come to the church, we put them in chains. We put them in bondage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's the thing that I deal with. When I, when I talk to someone, I'm telling them, I love Jesus, but I ain't going to your church. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to come to church, but I love Jesus, though. And I'm like, man, how do you love Jesus? The church is the bride, huh? No, nah, I'm the church. They, man, they know the Bible. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. But they said they're not coming up in here because when I go to church, they put me in bondage. They tell me what I can't do. They would tell me what I can't well, what I can't go. Yes, the Break. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 You gotta understand that religion has influenced and convinced us to preach a gospel of bondage and not freedom. That's right. The gospel is good news. The gospel of if it is bondage, then it's not from God. Jesus said in the chap in the fourth chapter of Luke, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover the sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I don't see bondage in there at all. Yeah. I, I don't see law in there. I don't see anything like that in there. What God, what Jesus said he was sent to the earth to do. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 says that where the spirit of the Lord is, yes. there is liberty. There is liberty. That's right. If, if the gospel that you believe in that's brought you to Christ, is there's not liberty there, that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. You hear that? Right. You have to understand that religion made people that were sick and had issues live outside of the gate. Yes. Yes. They wasn't welcome in. That's right. That's right. That's right. Kingdom says, come all that are weary and heavy burden, I'll give you rest. Yes. Religion treats citizens as criminals. That's right. Religion casts down the poor and widows. Kingdom individuals pick them up. Yeah. In the kingdom, it's all about the king's desire. That's right. In the kingdom, the kingdom and the king dominates. That's what king says. Right. King yeah. dominates. Yeah. The only gospel is repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Right. Read your Bible and you will realize that Jesus never preached religion, but he preached kingdom. Yeah. I was told that Reverend Scarver said that this church will be built on Matthew 6 and 33. Yeah. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be supplied. That's right. He said, this for this church to be built on. Seek ye first the kingdom. Yeah. Not religion. Seek ye first the kingdom. And everything else will be added unto you. In the kingdom, God's desire is for you to prosper. That's right. In the kingdom, the king's desire is for you to be in good health. The king's desire is for you to have all your needs met. 
That's right. The king desires for you to have the mind of Christ. That's right. A mind of Christ is not a depressed mind because a mind of Christ has tapped into the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's right. That's right. A mind of Christ is not a mind of anxiety because a mind of Christ knows that all things work together for the good of those that love God. Do I got any Bible readers in here? Can y'all talk back to me? Yeah. <laughs> a mind of Christ is not a mind of low self-esteem because a mind of Christ knows that I am made in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah. It knows that I'm physically and wonderfully made. Yeah. A mind of Christ knows that I'm a chosen generation. That's right. A royal priesthood. Yeah. A holy nation. Yeah. And God's own special possession. But look at verse 5 says that, that he, will, he will be in the tomb crying and cutting himself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's a couple things that I need you to see. Night and day. He had grown accustomed to the pain. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see him wanting to die, but he couldn't even do that right. That's right. He was all alone. Nah, nah, nah. And, and the Bible says one day Jesus was passing by. He saw it. Oh, oh. And when this man, when he saw Jesus, he saw life. Yeah, he saw yeah. life. Yeah, that's right. When he saw Jesus, he saw love. Talk, talk, man, talk. Yeah, when, when he saw Jesus, talk. he saw purpose, and he ran talk. to him. That's yeah. right. All his life, he was running people away. Yes, sir. He was running from chains. So I believe his cries was pleased for help. And the Bible says that God is a present help. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he right. looked up and he saw his help and ran to it. Yeah. He was still bound. Yeah. He was still nasty. My, my, he was my. still smelling like sex, drugs, and alcohol. Yeah. He was fresh out the platinum. And he saw Jesus. Nah, nah, nah. Listen, religion would have said no. Religion would have put him out. <laughs> if religion would have let him in, he would say, sit in the back. Religion says, you come, sit up in the balcony. Religion says, get yourself together and then you can come. But is there anybody in here that can testify that if it had not been for grace abounding in your own life, yeah. that you wouldn't be where you are right now? Yeah. That's the truth. If it had not been for grace, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be here preaching this good news right now. I wouldn't have my right mind right now. I wouldn't be a free man right now. It's like I got enough friends that 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 committed suicide, that that's killed, that's been murdered, that's in jail, served prison time, serving life sentences, all these things that could have been me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, great, You're right, brother. But because of the grace, so. also the grace. Oh. Listen, oh y'all can put your hands together for that. That's good. That's right. That's right. That's right. Even in the but I understand that religion equals works. Mercy. But kingdom equals grace. Yeah, kingdom yeah. equals grace. Yeah. So he came to Jesus. Jesus didn't mention his sin. He didn't bring up his past. The demoniac didn't even have to publicly confess his sins. All he had to do was come and want to be free. That's right. Listen, listen, and I made sure that I made this, put this sermon together this way. Because there's some people that are in here that are lost and God is saying, come. Come. Amen. Come. That's right. Yes, sir. So yes, come man. to the altar. That's right. Lost it, man. This man, he was still bound and he ran down to the altar. Yeah, he Amen. ran down at Jesus' feet. That's the altar. Yes, sir. Some come. people that need come. peace in their mind and God is saying, come. come. That's right. Come. Somebody in here needs deliverance and God is saying, come. There's somebody that was pondering suicide and God is saying come. You are dealing with anxiety and depression and low self-esteem and God is saying today is your day to be free so come. For some of you that are just ready to quit, you are wanting to give up on everything. You feel like no one else cares about you and everything you are doing is for naught. You love Jesus but you feel empty and God is saying today is the day that I fill you up again. Yeah, yeah. I want you to come. Yeah, yeah. Then there is somebody in you who just need a touch from God, and God yeah. is saying, come. Uh, uh. Listen, I don't know who it is in here, but if whatever you're dealing with, and all you want to do is have an experience with Jesus Christ, today is the day. This, today is the day that your freedom can come. Yeah, yeah. 
Say it. I'm not telling you something I'm Say guessing. I'm not telling you something that sounds good, but I'm telling you something that I've known. Yeah. I know individuals that was dealing with slow self-esteem, that was dealing with depression. All they had was one experience with God. This man was bound. Bound. I don't know if you have any areas in your life that you're feeling bound in. And, 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 and today God is saying, come. Come. Wherever you are. Yeah. Even if you don't come today in this church, it's important for you to know that God is welcoming you. Whosoever will, let him come. That's what he said. You, you make it home and you may stay in your closet. And you remember that God said, come. Bring your pain to him. Yeah. Bring your depression to him. Bring your hurt to him. Yeah. Bring your sadness to him. Yeah. Those times when you're all alone, you feel like no one loves you. Know that God loves you and he's saying, come. Yeah. Yeah. Anchor your life in me. That's right. And I'm going to change your life. Yeah. Come on, just think about it. Think about it. Today is your day of freedom. I'm speaking it over your life right now. Today is your day of freedom. Yes. Whatever it is, that God is freeing you on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not concerned about your past. He's not concerned about your present. He's not concerned about your future. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. God is saying, come. Give me your heart. Give me your mind. Give me your will. Yeah, he want to change your name. Oh, he's going to change your name. Yeah, he's going to change your name. Is there anybody in here willing to say that I'm ready to go to the next level with Christ? <laughs> that God, I'm ready for you to do a new thing in my life. That I'm waiting for you, ready for you to do the new thing, ready to take you to a new level in your life. I'm ready to live life on your level, God. I'm right, I'm right, I'm ready right now, God. God, I'm, eyes have not seen God. No ears heard, God. The doors that you're about to open up in my life, if you receive it, come on and lift your hands in this place. I say, God, I receive it. God, I believe it. God, do it in my life, God. Clean out everything that's not like me, God. God, I thank you for loving me, God. I thank you for praising me, God. I thank you for worshiping and allowing me to worship you, God. I thank you for everything you're doing, God. Do it, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Draw your people to you like never before, God. Be magnified in this place, God. God, allow us to be the Jesus that our community sees, that our job sees, that our school sees, God. Use me, God. Come on, if you believe it, say, use me, God. You don't have to use my brother, you don't have to use my sister, God, but use me, God. I want to be used by you, God.